It's been 50 years since an American-built car won the overall Le Mans race. But with the emergence of Glickenhaus Lycanus, the wait may be over. The 24 hours of Le Mans has historically been dominated by European automobiles, making it difficult for American cars to make a significant impact. All this makes the thought of an all-American automobile competing and winning against the best in Europe on their home soil quite amazing. The small American supercar manufacturer is hoping to make the US successful at Le Mans once more, and they think the Glickenhaus Lycanus SCG007 may just be the vehicle to do so. Given the car's performance in Le Mans this year, it's been ranked as the fifth best car to watch out for in the 2023 Le Mans race. So stay tuned to find out why we also think this will be the car to break the jinx. Le Mans is auto racing's equivalent of the Boston Marathon. The grueling endurance event takes place close to the French town of Le Mans and requires competitors to race breathtakingly fast vehicles for 24 non-stop hours at top speeds of almost 200 miles per hour on the quickest part of the extraordinarily long 8.5 mile Circuit de la Sarthe road course. The car that travels the longest distance in 24 hours wins the 24 hours of Le Mans, which is in contrast to fixed distance races where the winner is decided by minimum time. To win the Le Mans 24 hour race, racing teams must strike a balance between the need for speed and the vehicle's capacity to last a full 24 hours without a mechanical breakdown. The top speed of the vehicles on this track is about 227 miles per hour, while past races have seen them hit 252 miles per hour before track upgrades. Thus, the competition is a grueling test that pushes both the driver and vehicles to their braking points. The top two classes of cars in the race used to be LMP1 and LMP2 cars, which had the appearance of four-wheeled fighter aircraft and used sophisticated aerodynamics to suck them to the track, allowing them to travel at incredible speeds around turns. Teams are now being encouraged to race gasoline-electric hybrids, and Toyota's TS050 LMP1, which took first place last year, produced an engine that was said to have 986 horsepower using this technology. Vehicles in the LMP2 class are similar to those in the LMP1 class, but they are slower, less complicated, and powered by regular gasoline engines. LMP1 cars were replaced with the new hypercar class starting in the 2021 season. The new rules specify that the vehicles may be either a prototype or a modified hypercar made especially for racing. Among the rivals this year were the well-known Toyota GR010 Hybrid and the brand new Scuderia Cameron Glickenhaus 007 LMH. Before the Le Mans races, most people had never heard of Scuderia Cameron Glickenhaus but they have been working in the background, trying to make the dream of an American Le Mans winner possible. SCG, short for Scuderia Cameron Glickenhaus, might have been a relatively unknown name. However, judging from its current trajectory, the name is about to become a household fixture. Founded by Jim Glickenhaus, he and his family have helped the company become as prominent as it is today. The name of the business, Scuderia Cameron Glickenhaus, is a combination of his last name and those of his wife, Meg, they manufacture highly specialized race cars, and their interest stems from the fact that, for homologation purposes, several race series want a minimum complement of road-going variants. SCG's path to Le Mans began 15 years ago with the development of the P4-5 by Pininfarina, a one-of-a-kind road car built on the chassis of a Ferrari Enzo with Ferrari's approval in 2006. Next, they produced the 003 and 004 GT cars, which were constructed by the Italian company Podium Advanced Technologies, which would also be in charge of building the 007 hypercars, even though SCG is technically a US team. Finally, after many years of waiting for their chance, the FIA's Le Mans hypercar regulations gave SCG the chance to enter Le Mans, something they have long expressed a desire to accomplish, and they grabbed the opportunity with both hands. They started building the Glickenhaus SCG-007 LMH, SCG's sports prototype racing car designed especially for the Le Mans hypercar division of the FIA World Endurance Championship, with the obvious goal of building a winning vehicle. For the 007C, the French company Pippo Motors created a 3.5-liter twin-turbo V8. This V8 is coupled to a custom block and is built around the cylinder head architecture of the company's I-4 WRC engines. 
Due to pollution regulations, the 4.4-liter twin-turbocharged BMW S63 V8 engine in the road-going SCG003 Stradale was modified. And as it was not constrained by racing regulations, it was tuned to 750 horsepower. It was originally planned for the new SCG007 Competizione Hypercar to be an LMP1 hybrid prototype for Le Mans, Daytona, and IMSA. But the new rule revisions and formalities have forced a change of plans. The rules were amended such that the combined total horsepower of both drive units would be 740 instead of the original 800 horsepower for the V6 and 200 horsepower for the front-wheel drive hybrid component. In response, SCG abandoned the hybrid element and contacted the French engine manufacturer Pippo Motors, which produced a brand new twin-turbo V8 engine with the SCG nameplate that will also power the SCG-007 Stradale vehicles. The introduction of the new LMP1 hypercar class into the IMSA and WEC was originally scheduled for a later date, but was delayed until 2022 due to the global coronavirus outbreak. But even with the delay, it was well worth the wait. Whilst it may seem incredible that a brand new team could enter the Le Mans 24 hours race with a brand new car and finish in the running for the podium, knowing the amount of incredible engineering that went into building the hypercar, it's hardly surprising. Inside their class, they managed to outperform Alpine by a wide margin, losing only to the more experienced and better funded Toyotas by a narrow gap. They placed third behind two fastest Toyota GR010 hybrid vehicles at the Circuit de la Sarte, with drivers Ryan Briscoe, Richard Westbrook, and Frank Milo giving Glickenhaus the podium finish. And by doing this, they demonstrated the heritage and success of the company's merchandise. Despite this loss, the overall race data, particularly the top speeds of the vehicles, are a clear indication of how good the Glickenhaus vehicles are. Data shows that the vehicles were just a few hundredths of a second slower than the Gazoo Racing Toyotas, clocking in at 146.4 miles per hour during racing, while the Toyotas reached high speeds of 146.6 and 146.7. The five-lap difference between the two brands, according to Toyota Technical Director Pascal Vassalon, was indicative of how well each brand performed, and when other conditions permit, Toyota's technical director thinks Glickenhaus would be a worthy competitor against Toyota's hybrid vehicles. The auto world is really excited right now, as everyone wonders if Glickenhaus is more likely than ever to win the overall championship at the next Le Mans, given how well they performed this year. But there will be some more obstacles. With Peugeot launching its two-car program at Monza in July, and Ferrari, Porsche, and Cadillac, all entering the division with either LMH or LMDH gear in 2023, the competition in the FIA World Endurance Championships hypercar class is expected to heat up from this point on. It means that Glickenhaus will compete against some of the biggest automakers in the world next year. This is a pretty big challenge because Glickenhaus is a small boutique manufacturer, while the other automakers are capable of devoting a sizable amount of technical and financial resources to their most recent sports car racing endeavors. Some people think Glickenhaus can still compete on an equal footing with its larger rivals, pointing out that it has dependable internal combustion engine, produced by Pippo Motors, while Porsche and Cadillac must deal with a spec hybrid unit that is rumored to have experienced early teething problems. Other people have however suggested that driving a car from the factory to the race in a pro-level championship is ludicrous, but Glickenhaus doesn't seem discouraged. So, while many think they are out of their depth, they have reiterated that they are not afraid of the competition and are happy with their recent racing success. SCG believes there will be little difference in performance between the Toyota GR010 and the 007C hypercar over a single lap in 2023. SCG has also decided to retail the vehicle, but for it to remain unique, the SCGC007 Strawdale will only be available in 20 units, with costs starting at $2.1 million. There's clearly a lot of hype around the car, but do you think the Glickenhaus SCG007 can succeed where other American cars have failed? And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our channel for more awesome content.